Greetings everyone, I am Namrita Balani here with episode 3 of our Zoom tutorial, Tips and Tricks for Virtual Lessons. The ministry knows that you've tuned in because you are excited to learn. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started. So at this point, we have already shown you how to properly navigate Zoom through your web browser or through your mobile device or your computer using the Zoom app. We have also learned how to schedule a meeting, how to join a meeting, how to create an impromptu meeting using the new meeting option. So today what we want to do is go over a couple tips and tricks to ensure you have a smooth experience when conducting your first virtual lesson. Now that you guys are experts on Zoom, for your first class, set aside some time to introduce your student to Zoom and ensure that they're able to connect to their audio on their video. You can even spend a couple minutes going over some do's and don'ts to ensure there is minimal distraction during class time. For hosts, when starting a meeting on the bottom, you will notice a security icon on the toolbar. This icon will be extremely helpful for teachers who want to keep control of their class. So we want to show you how it's done so you can either follow along or take out a notebook and jot down some points. So first thing that we will do is start a new meeting with ourselves. So go ahead and if you have a device, you can follow along. If you do not, don't be afraid. You can just take out a notebook and jot down some points. So go ahead and click on the new meeting button to start a meeting with ourselves. You can expand that window and just wait a couple seconds till the meeting connects. Once it's connected, go ahead and mute yourselves. As we mentioned, that is a good practice. So as you notice, there is a security option here. We are the host, hence why we can see this option. If you are just a participant in a meeting, you will not be able to have uh, control over the security option. In fact, you will not even see the button at all if you are just a participant. So let's go ahead and see what the security option does. You can click on the security button and you have a list of options that you can allow your participants to do or you can disable it for them. Um, as you can see by default, the share screen is turned off, but the chat renaming themselves, having the option to unmute themselves and start video is by default allowed. Um, I think the share screen option being um, being disabled from the beginning is actually a good thing. You don't want them to distract. Say, for example, if you are giving a lesson and you are sharing your screen, you don't want them to accidentally share their screen, which would throw off your screen and um, cause any distraction. So having that turned off or disabled is actually a good practice. So as you can see on the top here, we have different options as well. We have the option of lock meeting, enable waiting room in meeting, and able to hide profile pictures in case you do not want to see that. The lock meeting option is very helpful for teachers to ensure that students tune in at a specific time. So say, for example, if you have an 8 a.m. class and you decide that you will give students a 10 minute grace period, so at 810, what you can do is go ahead and click on the lock meeting option, which will make sure that even if the student has the link to the meeting or they have the meeting ID and the password, they will not be able to log in or join the meeting after you've locked it. This should help control the latecomers and enforce the students to be on time. Another neat feature is being able to set a virtual background. Say you are at home and your house is a mess and you do not have time to clear it up and your class is about to start. Well, a feature you can choose is the virtual background. To do that, you can follow the steps over here. You can go ahead and click on the arrow by start video and choose, click on choose virtual background. Once the settings for that open up, you will see that you have a bunch of options and you also have the option to be able to add an image or a video. 
I would encourage you if you want to have a more professional setting, you can upload the school logo and have it behind you when teaching. So it creates more of that school um, professional setting. Don't be afraid to explore and press buttons. There are tons of options that you can always go through on your own. There are tons of features available and once you get more comfortable using the Zoom client, you will realize it has tons of potential. I'm pretty sure when your students join, they will be as inquisitive and will start playing with the different options. At that rate, I am pretty sure you guys can all learn from each other. I can't tell you which options are ideal or which do's and don'ts you as a teacher needs to put in place. I'm just a guide giving you some tips. For example, the chat feature, it can be extremely helpful as the students can bounce ideas off of each other or even ask a question. But like everything, there is a downside where the students can use the chat just to talk about their day or random conversations during class time, which can be a major distraction. Hence why in the beginning, as I stated, it is important to highlight some do's and don'ts. So one of them could be that if the students are using the chat feature just to waste time, then they will be penalized in some way or the other. Let me go ahead and show you the options that you have with this chat feature. With this COVID-19 pandemic, kids have been home for almost a year, and I know they miss having interaction with their classmates. So you want to encourage educational interaction, but you also want to keep distraction to a minimal. So you have to ensure that the option that you select best fits your class. I personally would recommend the everyone publicly instead of the everyone publicly and directly option. Um, if you do select the everyone publicly and directly, that's where you would be able to use this tool function. Otherwise, if it's just everyone publicly, then you don't need to make any change. Um, the only other change that they can do is they can just select host only, where they would be able to send you a message privately, which is okay if they want to ask something one on one. Another helpful tip is giving an agenda or plan for each class by screen sharing a document or a slide at the beginning of the class. This gives students a clear idea of how the class will progress, what will be covered, and the activities that they will engage in. So you can do that by simply clicking on the share screen button on your toolbar and whatever windows you have open or documents or PowerPoint slideshow you have open, you can just click on it and then click on the share button. So then the students will be able to see the agenda or the slideshow that you have prepared for them and everyone can be on the same page. Some students have expressed how much they miss that in-class interaction and they also miss running up to the chalkboard or the whiteboard and answering some questions. Well, with Zoom, we can somehow still do that by utilizing the whiteboard option. Let's see how to do that. Go ahead and scroll down to your screen and click on the share screen option. As you can see over here, there's something named whiteboard. Let's highlight it and say share. Okay, over here, there are tons of options. You can have text, you can draw, um, there's a spotlight, there's tons of options that you can go through. So a way you can use this is say you can type in a, task, uh, a text and you can ask the student to circle which one is right. So if, say for example, we want them, say this is spelling class, and we want them to be able to circle the right spelling. So here we enter. We'll go ahead and tell them, okay, we have some words on the on the whiteboard. Go ahead and circle the one that's spelled correctly. They can go ahead and say they'll just draw a circle and they can they can think about which option is correct and then they can circle it. And that increases um, engagement and allows them to interact. And it also makes sure um, that they are still awake and listening to your class. 
Also, say if you don't have time to type up the text here and you have a paper that you want to be able to share on your screen and then have the students annotate and be interactive on that, you can do that as well. What we'll do is go ahead and we will say we want a new share and then click on the photos that I had opened, a worksheet that I had already downloaded. So as you can see here, you're encouraging them to get active and to click or circle the correct spelling. So go ahead and we'll say annotate so that toolbar opens up. We can go ahead and say draw and then they can go ahead and circle the correct spelling. So you can have multiple children doing it. You can have one child do it at one at a time, um, whatever the option is. But there are tons of options. Either you want to do the whiteboard option or you have a document you want to open up and have them annotate on that. The choice is yours. Take time to promote questions, comments, and reactions from your class. Give a minute to allow your students to utilize the reactions, to write their questions in chat, or to be unmuted to ask their questions live. Utilize your whiteboard, have the students annotate, and get them as engaged as possible. I know students miss having group work with their friends. Well, some students. <laughs> so this next feature that we are going to cover will allow for virtual group work. This feature is referred to as breakout rooms on Zoom. It allows you to split your Zoom meeting in up to 50 separate sessions. Let's show you how to do this. To do this, you must first log into your Zoom on your web browser to enable the breakout room option. So what you can do is open up a web browser and navigate to zoom.us. It will probably prompt you to sign in, use the credentials that we created the last time. Then you can go ahead and click on my account on the right hand side and then navigate to settings, which would be on the left hand panel. So once you are here, you can either scroll down and find the breakout room function or you can go ahead and press Control F on your keyboard like I just did and just type in break. This will just take you directly to the button that will allow you to enable breakout room. A mini shortcut and a quick tip for you to learn. Um, so go ahead and click on it. Once it's blue, that means it is enabled. We would like to highlight that you must that you should check on the button that says allow host to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. Once we have enabled that, we can go back to our Zoom client and check out the function over there. We'll go ahead and click on new meeting. We'll expand this and the breakout room option should be on the bottom. There it is, breakout rooms. So we can show you a little bit of what this can do and you can go ahead and play around with it some more. So you can go ahead and click on breakout rooms. Over here, a window will open and here you can decide how many breakout rooms you want to create. If you want the students to be assigned automatically, if you want to assign them manually, or if you want the participants to be able to choose the room that they would like to join. A tip I would recommend is to pre-assign the participants to breakout rooms when you schedule the meeting instead of managing them during the meeting. Again, this is just to ensure that you make the most out of your time for your virtual lesson. So with this breakout room option, I hope your students will enjoy having group work once again, even if it is virtually for right now. And now a couple tips and tricks for delivery. Preset your meeting to mute participants microphone upon entry. This helps to avoid background noise and also allows your students to focus on your lesson. Look at the camera to create eye contact with your students. This helps to create a more personal connection while teaching over video. Take a second to check the chat on your student or your students video if they are on camera to check in with your students and to get feedback. Speak as if you are face to face with the class while ensuring you are at an appropriate distance from the microphone for the best audio experience. When delivering a presentation, sharing images, files or video, give your students a moment to open or take in what you've shared. Embrace the pause. 
Take a moment after the end of your comments to allow for students to engage before continuing on. I hope these will be helpful for you to follow. So today we went over some tips that you can follow to ensure that you have a smooth virtual lesson. We also went through some of the commonly used controls of Zoom and how to best utilize them. Additionally, to get students more involved, more engaged, and also to encourage group work, we showed you how to use the whiteboard and breakout room option on Zoom. We hope you've learned a lot and are ready to conduct your very first virtual lesson. See you till next time.